Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Carpo's Herbal Corner here, I guess. Um, for those who have been following my channel for a while, you know that I've been talking about various herbs. And uh, one of the herbs that I've been selling on my website is Makuna. And I've had several people ask me about it, exactly what it is and how it works. Um, you know, L-Dopa is the main ingredient that we're looking for here in Makuna. Uh, L-Dopa is a precursor to dopamine, which the body uses for not just pleasure activities. There's a major misconception here that people think that dopamine is released when a person feels good or gets high. Uh, this is a complete misconception. Uh, people should know that all of these studies that have been done on the dopamine system as well as serotonin have led us to understand that they are an intertwined, intermingled system that is very complicated and very difficult to assess. There's no magic pill that a person can take and say, okay, this is going to boost my dopamine unless all of the other uh, components are there in place. I've been doing intensive research over the last couple of weeks about dopamine, about the dopamine system, and about how these different types of medicines affect the dopamine levels in our bloodstream, in our brains. First off, dopamine itself cannot be used, it cannot be uh, across the blood-brain barrier. I guess in very small amounts it can, and they do dopamine injections after like open heart surgery, uh, certain things like that. But that it doesn't actually, uh, it's not very readily absorbable. The best way to consume it is to take L-DOPA, and then your body uses that L-DOPA, or levodopa, and converts it into dopamine. Now in order to do this, the body needs to have various enzymes. Now, this is the part that got really interesting. Uh, I've, now I've been, this is the stuff that I've been selling. This is uh, standard 25% L-DOPA Makuna. So I decided to go out on a limb here and I ordered some 99% pure white powder. This is 99% pure L-DOPA. And I thought, okay, now am I kind of cheating? Because in a lot of, say Kratom for example, you could take out mitragynine, one of the active components, and uh, it wouldn't be Kratom anymore. It has several other components to it that also have a synergistic effect that help the, that help the person to achieve a certain feeling, and this is why different strains have different effects on people. But when it comes to something where you're looking for one particular compound in a plant, uh, which, uh, you know, while there's a lot of synergy in certain herbs, some of them it's just one compound, and as far as we know, L-DOPA is what we're looking for. So here's a bag of L-DOPA. Uh, I bought 100 grams of it. I might end up <coughs> ordering more. I'm going to see how this works. What I'm planning to do, uh, the dosage on this is three to five, or three times a day, you know, some people are saying 250 milligrams. Uh, so if you take a teaspoon of this Makuna, you end up getting basically a half teaspoon of L-Dopa because it's 25%. So I take two, or sorry, I'm sorry, two grams is what I was meant. If you take a teaspoon, which is about two grams of this, you get about uh, 500 milligrams of L-Dopa, uh, which one small scoop can do the same thing, which means that this could fill a capsule. Uh, which would be more convenient for some people. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I found out that the B vitamins, uh, namely vitamin B6, um, I believe it contains an enzyme or breaks up into enzymes, which, it, if I'm not mistaken, it's two enzymes which, which help L-DOPA to be absorbed better into the bloodstream, therefore creating a better chance for a dopamine. So these B vitamins help these enzymes which help in turn uh, you may have heard of tyrosine now tyrosine is the L tyrosine that you'll see in like energy drinks and after doing uh, a little research on this I found out that I guess the B vitamins I guess they convert to L tyrosine and then to L dopa you know down the line and and many of these compounds can break off into other compounds whatever the body needs but I found out that taking tyrosine with some of these compounds actually negates the effects that you're supposed to take them separated over a couple hours. So here we have these energy drinks that are loaded up with B vitamins and tyrosine and all this, which are probably just, you know, negating themselves in many ways. But hey, if you can throw it in a bottle and, and call it, you know, healthier energy, you know, people will buy it. So the reason why I got into this is because everybody's looking to find that happy feeling, but we're not looking to get high, we're not looking to abuse our bodies or, or escape reality. We're just looking to have a normal, functional connection with the world around us. And dopamine levels help us to acquire this. 
Now, back to what I was saying earlier about dopamine being released or not released during pleasure times. Uh, what they found recently is that dopamine actually is, is, uh, is, is released before you take an action. So anyone who's ever had something really exciting they're about to do, namely if you're consuming a particular drug, if you're about to take a psychedelic and you know that you're going to, you might get this rush of this feeling as if you're already high. Uh, this can happen, this is the same rush that you might get from going shopping or spending money. Uh, this is dopamine at, in action. And that feel-good chemical is released before we do the action. But the, here's what they found out is that it's actually released when we're in pain or suffering as well, or before we go into these states. So think of dopamine rather than being a pleasure chemical. Think of it as being a programming chemical. That when you have enough dopamine in your system, it allows you to open up to what's going on around you and to absorb it better. So if you learn something, or let's say you hear a song and you have higher dopamine and serotonin levels, you're more likely to bond to that song, uh, just like people. And this is why people who take MDMA together, uh, they have a very high flow of dopamine and serotonin. And I use these interchangeably because we don't just, we realize now that serotonin and dopamine aren't just these separate chemicals that just act on one thing. These do several different things. And the human body is amazing. Um, HGH, or human growth hormone, is also part of this DOPA process. It uses levodopa to make HGH. Um, so I've got this little paper here that was sent to me with the, uh, with the levodopa powder. I just thought I'd read some of this information here. L-DOPA is an amino acid that converts into dopamine. Dopamine is an essential component that is required for proper, proper functioning of the brain. Muscles can become tense and tremble without the neurotransmitter dopamine to serve a damping effect on neural transmissions. And before I forget, we can tie this on into low blood sugar um, when a person starts feeling shaky and whatnot. Uh, there's, there's a lot involved here. You know, if you haven't eaten, then that's a major component of it. But dopamine is part of the reason your body needs components to turn into these compounds to help your body. Okay, L-DOPA contains natural secretagogues, which may support the body's ability to stimulate the natural release of growth hormone. The blood carries the dopamine into the brain, where it naturally increases HGH production from the pituitary gland. The increased dopamine levels may also optimize the production of other hormones, including testosterone, leading to improved performance for both men and women, and it may be beneficial in stimulating muscle growth, as well as burning fat from fat cells. L-DOPA potential benefits. Increase mental alertness and brain function. Increase lean muscle mass. Increase bone density and reverse osteoporosis. Improve sleep and promote a deeper sleep. Reduce body fat and decrease cellulite. Improve skin texture and appearance. De decrease the appearance of wrinkles. Improve mood and sense of well-being. There's the key one, should be the first one. Increased energy levels. Improved cholesterol performance or profile and regeneration of organs enhanced libido and performance, strengthened immune system, and it may help in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's is caused by low dopamine levels, so they've been treating them with various compounds like L-DOPA or Levodopa, and uh, they've had varying success with this. The part, you know, a person who has Parkinson's, you know, the shakiness is due to the poor co coordination of muscle movements because of the lack of dopamine. Um, so, I guess I've pretty much said everything I could possibly say about it, as far as what I know. There are several things that I've learned. My, my, my plan long term here is to, uh, to mix levodopa with a small amount of pure vitamin B6 powder, and then add that to a capsule with uh, perhaps a filler, or you know, I keep it simple. There are too many companies out there that are just throwing a bunch of herbs together in a pill and calling it energy, or calling it, you know, healthy, brain, whatever, and, you know, uh, I want to make sure that something's actually going to function. I, I read an article, <clears throat> or it was in a book, about molecules, and they were talking about natural medicines and plants and sugars, and how it's very expensive and complicated to test with mass spectrometer for all these different compounds, especially if they're ones that aren't really recognized very well yet. In other words, you can't just take an er a bottle of herbs to the down to the local you know science lab and say, hey, test these to make sure that it's what it says it is. Very expensive to do so. 
They found out that after doing testing that 63% of all herbs on the market, or herb, herb, herbs in capsules, 63% uh, contained herbs that weren't listed on the label, and a full 25 to 30% didn't contain any of the compound on the label. You know, this thing happened with Kratom. People were selling Mitrogena Javanica, which is like Mitrogena speciosa, but it doesn't have the same alkaloid profile. So it might give you a little feeling like Kratom. I bought this stuff in the past not knowing better. Hey, $100 a kilo sounded like a great deal. But you get what you pay for. You always do. So before I put any of this on the market, I tested myself. But how well can you test something without taking it for weeks, months, years on end? So that's my disclaimer here is that I'm not a doctor and I cannot prescribe anything for you. I can give you the best advice I can. Some things are much more touchy like Kratom because in a lot of places it's banned and so you have to say it's for research purposes and not for human consumption. Whereas uh, Makuna or L-Dopa is well known to be a food source so I am totally justified in saying that this stuff is okay to consume. So uh, at least okay if you're careful and you know what you're doing, but many of these things are hard to overdo. So that was my little talk about Makuna. I think it uh, has really improved my outlook and you can't really take too much. You'll find yourself wanting to do your other habits less, let's say if you're, I'm a pot smoker and I find myself wanting to smoke pot less when I'm taking my Makuna, which is interesting and that's kind of how I gauge uh, the efficacy of certain things. Does it make me content in the moment I'm at? You know, am I happy where I am? And am I happy where I am, but functional and coherent? Or am I just in a daze? And I don't like being in a daze, I like being coherent. So, <clears throat> if anybody's interested in ordering some Makuna, just go ahead and hit up my website. Um, I'm going to be selling it by the ounce right now. I'm not gonna do anything with the powder itself, the extract yet. It's still in the experimental stages, so. Yeah, we will see, and uh, so I hope Hope you learned something. Hope you learned something about your dopamine system. I wish you all the best of luck.